Hello, YouTube friends. Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, today I'm going to go ahead and put the, the background onto this 55-gallon uh, tank using the material that I talked about in that last in that last uh, video, I'll put a link. Um, I'll, I'll put a link up here somewhere, and you can see that last video if you want to take a look at it. Uh, and this is that Vela Velamax, Velamax material. You can see it there, Velamax, and uh, it's a um, it's very easy to work with. Uh, you just have to be sure you follow a few uh, a few of the real basic steps, and the instruction sheet is very easy to follow. Be sure to get a hold of of uh, some of these uh, microfiber glass and mirror cloths. This is just one example. You can find these anywhere. Anything that's lint-free and streak-free. Something that is streak-free and lint-free. And the first step that we have to do is, is uh, really clean, really clean this surface. So I've just got some streak-free glass cleaner here. Just some Zep, some plain old Zep. You can use any kind, Windex, whatever. Just uh, something that really, really will leave the glass perfectly clean. If you run into any spots on the glass that um, have something that's caked on, for example, with this aquarium, there was a tag, a sticky tag, right in this area here. So there's probably some residue, some residue from that sticky tag. Simply use a, uh, a razor blade, like right in here, there's a little bit of that uh, re residue from that sticker that was on here. Yeah, that got that off. So just use a, a razor blade to get that kind of stuff and uh, give it a good, good cleaning. Now that the surface is, uh, is perfectly clean, we can go ahead and uh, cut, cut to size the material we're going to be using. And they recommend they recommend that you cut one inch, one inch larger or bigger than you need in all directions. Now that the, now that the surface is perfectly clean, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and cut this, cut this material. And this material is very easy to work with. And they give you some lines. See this here? These are just some lines you can follow, so you make sure that your cuts are nice and straight. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this 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 little product that came that came along with uh, with some of this material that I was using previously, using something like a, a piece of wood or any kind of a straight edge, just to kind of guide guide you along. You can just do a real a, a light cut here. You can see how easy it is to work with. It cuts very, very easily. Pull this down. Using something like a straight edge just helps you get a, a cleaner cut. You probably could do it freehand without a problem. Once it's cut to the desired uh, size, then comes the, uh, the tricky part of separating it. And you have to just take two, uh, the two pieces. It has a backing that you remove. Sometimes what they suggest is that you use a piece of tape. See, this is the backing that had the cutting lines on it. There's a lot of static, so be careful not to get clothing or anything close to this because lint will, will get on it. You'll get little bits of cotton and what have you. Then you have to pick those off while you're working. Ask me how I know. So 
as you can see it in an ideal world I'd have another person pulling and between the two of us we'd get this right off and then what you do is you want to spray a little bit of water on this try and get any lint or cotton or anything that might be floating around that's settled on it don't want to spray too much and then what you do is you uh, you spray the surface you're going to put it on And again, two people would be a lot, uh, it would be better as a two person job, but it is manageable for just one person if it's just you. Use two of your edges that are already cut along the edge here. That way you don't have to mess around with more cutting than you, than you need to. The water that, you, that I've sprayed both on the tank and on the material is helping it to move around easily. Now you can lift it up if you need to. Lay it back down like the way you would with a sheet, like a bed sheet. And That helps to get some of the bigger bubbles out of it. Keep messing with it until you got it exactly where you want it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty good. There are some bubbles in there. After you've got it all in position, give a light mist to the uh, give a light mist to the top of it here, and then just use a squeegee. Just a little squeegee. Just use something like this. You can use any kind of squeegee, really, and just kind of work from the middle out. Get all the wrinkles out. Get all the air out of it. I kind of work from the middle out. Down. Now for those of you that haven't watched or didn't watch the last video, the reason I decided to go with this instead of uh, spray paint or an acrylic paint is um, I, I realized that one of the things that have bothered me about tanks in the past has been when they've, uh, when they've become scratched. And when they get scratched, it's just an eyesore. And maybe more for me because I'm filming and every time that that scratch shows on camera, I cringe a little bit. But um, with this kind of a material, if I get to a point and, and for whatever reason my tank becomes scratched, I literally can flip the tank around. I can drop the water level. I can drop the water level, peel this off the back, and peel it onto the uh, side that has the scratch. And that way the scratch will be in the back where you can hide it with plants and things of that nature. But when it's in the front, of course, it can grow, a scratch can grow algae and just become a real eyesore. I ended up with a little extra on this side and that's okay. I'll just use my cutter and the straight edge, and I'll just uh, trim that little extra piece off. Very, very easy to do, I'll show you. You certainly don't want to get anything sharp in the, um, in the seam, and, and by that what I mean, the area that, where the glass is glued together, you never want to put a blade in between there. And something you want to keep in mind when you're resealing a tank as well 
you never want to get a blade between the sheets of glass because it will definitely create a problem for you. So we get that off. Then you'll find that you can get a little extra water out of it. And then we'll cut the bottom. Now remember the bottom is going to be concealed by, um, by substrate. So you don't really have to be absolutely perfect on the bottom. I mean, naturally you want to be as, as good as you can be. But if you're a little bit off, a little high, it's not the end of the world. So the bottom is cut here. Now we'll do this, this edge. And again, you don't need uh, an X-Acto knife necessarily. Something small, something sharp like this, even a handheld razor blade. Even a handheld razor blade would do the trick. After you've cut off the edges, you'll, you'll have a little bit of water still in there that you can get out now. I like to really squeegee the heck out of it. That way you're less likely to have uh, bubbles on the inside of it. Those bubbles actually might not even show that much, especially after you put, uh, again, substrate and plants, decor, rocks, and depending on the lighting, probably in good shape. Okay, that looks good. Looks real good. <clears throat> so there you have it. Blacked out tank and uh, with material that can be removed by simply peeling off. You can just peel it right off and you're good to go. And I want to show you one more product that I came across, just as sort of a bonus. I think you're going to like this. Hold on. This is, uh, I feel like, uh, was, it, was it Mr. Wilson in that, in that program, Home Improvement, where he was looking over the, over the gate? <laughs> these are called, uh, these are like condensation trays. They're called condensation trays from a company called Supa. Can you see that there, Supa? condensation trays. And if you look at the top of a 55, you have these sections, these two sections, at least in this style of tank, that's the way it is. Check this out. These condensation trays fit perfectly on top of a 55 gallon. Check that out. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, you get a bunch of them in a pack, look at this. And because they have these uh, ripples in them, they're not going to sag, right? So I'm going to cut these to fit perfectly. The outside lip fits perfect, so I'll just cut off a little bit of each, each of these so that they fit inside of this middle bar, this, this uh, bar right here in the middle, the brace, the tank brace. It'll, they'll both fit perfectly right there on the tank brace. And, and then, what I'll do is the light fixture will sit on top and I'll probably cut uh, a small hole maybe right here in this flat area. Maybe I'll cut that out and that'll be the uh, feeding hole. And, uh, and I'll cut some space in the back for the uh, hang on back filter and tubing. This is a, a full spectrum LED light full spectrum LED light 
from the company uh, Beams, uh, Beam, Beams Work. Beams Work. And so that's going to sit right on top of this. See that? And that's the way my aquarium is going to look. These pieces will be, will be cut to shape and uh, leaving holes for equipment and for feeding. And this beams work, which is just about, actually it is, it is the perfect size for this 55 gallon aquarium. So there you have it. And uh, that's it for me from behind the wall. <laughs> Be sure to rate, share, comment, and uh, I hope you found this useful. And uh, in my next video, I'm going to show you the uh, tanks with some substrate and some filtration going and uh, maybe even a local, a local fish I'm going to go pick up, see how he does in a tank that is instantly cycled using that uh, Fritz Zyam 7 product. Okay, thank you for tuning in my friends. You are appreciated and uh, that's it for me. Bye-bye. <music>